Marriage has long been considered a foundational institution in many societies, providing emotional, social, and economic stability. Looking at data even from recent years, it's clear that those who are married tend to do better in society. Married households have higher income, married people in general have better physical and mental health, and kids that grow up in a two-parent household experience a more stable childhood. This might change in the future as our culture changes even more, but that's where we are right now. But in recent years, marriage has gradually declined in the US. In 2022, there were 6.2 marriages per 1,000 population. In 2000, the rate was 8.2 per 1,000 people. Looking back at when the rate was the highest in modern times in 1945, it was 17 per 1,000 people. Seeing these numbers, there is one thing that stood out to me. Marriage rates across the board have declined, true, but marriage rates for black Americans is notably lower compared to other races. According to the Pew Research Center, 63% of Asian adults and 57% of white adults are married, but only 33% of black adults are married. Why the big disparity when it comes to marriage rates? In this video, we will examine multifaceted reasons behind this trend, examining historical, economic, social, and cultural factors that contribute to the lower marriage rates among black Americans. And as always, I look forward to your input on this topic. My goal with all my videos is to start a conversation and I run to the comment section with every video we post. So I'll see you in the comments. The lower marriage rates among black Americans cannot be understood without considering the historical context of black families in America. During slavery, black families were often forcibly separated and the legal institution of marriage was not recognized for enslaved people. This historical trauma has had lasting effects on family dynamics and community structures. The Jim Crow era and subsequent discriminatory policies continue to undermine black families. Economic disenfranchisement, limited access to quality education, and systematic barriers to home ownership and wealth accumulation have had long-term impacts on family stability and marriage rates. Black marriage rates peaked at around 60% between 1950 and the 1960s, the era of the civil rights movement. So what happened after the 1950s and the 60s? Remember, marriage rates across the board have declined. So there's obviously a major cultural shift that happened after the mid-century era. One of the biggest things blamed for this phenomenon is the feminist movement. As women joined the workforce in high numbers, and maybe some began to view marriage as a want and not a need. Before the time women worked outside of the home and earned money in large numbers, it was vital to get married and have a man financially provide for you. Crazy little fact, I think, it it was either in the 60s or 70s when women finally were able to buy a home without a man, which is crazy to me. As we focus on the black community, there are those who make two arguments as to why the marriage rate dropped off so dramatically after the 1960s. One argument is that President Johnson's social welfare programs pretty much destroyed the black community by providing financial support to low income families and especially to single mothers. These programs include the expansion of food stamps and some healthcare programs. So they argue, and these are mostly conservative commentators, that black single mothers were pretty much incentivized to stay single and keep having babies out of wedlock and the government will support you. The second argument, again, this is coming from conservatives, is that the black culture just doesn't value marriage, period. They view this as a type of cultural flaw. I personally don't find these arguments very convincing. The first argument that welfare destroyed the black community begs the question, did the egg come first before the chicken? Did the black community need Need welfare first because they were economically struggling or did black women just wake up one day and say I'm gonna get this free money and just stay single basically I'm gonna raise kids by myself still struggle mind you because we all know you don't live large on welfare and barely survive because I'd rather get this free bread and government cheese than have a marriage yeah I don't think so as for the second argument there was actually research done by social psychologist Belinda Tucker about attitudes towards marriage in black communities she found out black people value marriage just as much if not more than white people. Obviously coming from the black culture myself, I personally know valuing marriage less is not the problem. Something else has to be it. Let me know in the comments if you view this differently. So let me tell you an argument that explains the sharp decline in marriages that makes a little more sense to me. Economic stability is a crucial factor influencing marriage rates. Financial insecurity and limited economic opportunities can deter individuals from marrying, as economic stability is often seen as a prerequisite for starting and maintaining a family. 
What started to happen in the post 1960s era in black communities is that jobs slowly started to disappear. Due to the historical lack of educational opportunities, black people and specifically black men were mostly employed in blue collar jobs. There were mainly factories in cities like Detroit, LA, Chicago, San Francisco, and the likes. If you remember the great migration of the black population from the South to the North, Midwest and the West was largely driven by the opportunity to find work in big cities. As factories began to shut down, black men found themselves unemployed in massive numbers. We have economic instability in a community that's segregated with very limited or underfunded educational opportunities. And I don't know if you've noticed, but unemployed men tend to not want to jump the broom or people want to jump the broom with them. It's easy to see how in an environment like this, there would be a huge decline in marriages. Then there is one other Another potent ingredient that gets added into the mix. And that's the drug epidemic of the 70s and 80s in the black community. It's the same thing we're witnessing now with the opioid crisis in rural communities across America that have struggled with the closing of mining and other job opportunities. When people lose their livelihood and then drugs are brought in, the devastation is incredible. Except when it happened in black communities, the government sent in SWAT teams and mass incarceration followed instead. That's yet another piece that contributed to the declining marriage rates. High incarceration rates among black men reduce the pool of eligible partners and disrupt existing relationships. There is now a very interesting dynamic that has formed in the black community. As black men have struggled to get ahead, who has gotten way ahead is black women. According to the Journal of Blacks in Higher Education, black women earn about two thirds of all bachelor's degrees awarded to black students, 70% of all master's degrees and 60% of all doctorates. And black women are closing on the income gap between the sexes very fast. And as research has shown that women, regardless of race, seek a partner that is as educated as they are and earns as much as they do, if not higher. So if these educational gap trends persist and black women out earn black men, marriage rates are going to decline even more. Of course, you can make the argument that black people will just marry outside of their race. But again, the research shows that over 80% of black people marry within their race. So where does this leave our community? I believe we are clearly in some type of transitional period and where we are headed will be nothing like the way we have lived, not just in the last few decades, but in the last few centuries. We are at the intersection of a new gender dynamics. AI technology is disrupting the job market and our daily lives in massive ways. The loneliness epidemic is only growing and birth rates are declining across the world. There is just so, so much coming down the pipeline of this human experience. No matter where we are headed, I'm afraid the black community will continue to drag behind if we don't address historical disparities now. Like I mean right now. And to be honest, this should have been done decades ago. We will forever play catch up in whatever way society changes. I'm curious to know what you think. And if you have made it all the way to the end of this video, you owe me a subscription and please hit that like button. Let's talk in the comments.